thousand feet, and guess what? I'm sitting pretty. If you're sitting right on the coast, on the east or west coast, I wouldn't want to be there. If you're in any large city, you're nuts. You need to move to the outskirts of the city at least. You need to start measuring with your neighbors to figure out, do you have a greenhouse? Do you have a food storage? Do you have personal protection? Do you have at least three weeks of water? Even drinking water. You're dead in a week if you don't have water. And let me tell you, if all the pumps stop, people say, oh, they won't stop because the fire department pumps it. They'll stop it because they can't deal with the sewage. I went and did research after last September, and I couldn't believe it when I checked it. Municipalities all across the country, none of them has this. But tell me about your walk, uh, the mutation walk, and uh, then maybe get into some of the points on why you believe the collective called Planet X, I call it the, the Passover star, the red dwarf subclass 3 star that's coming into our solar system, and what it's going to mean, not in August, September, because I don't have any confirmation, but sometime this decade. You know, what we noticed you know, a definite increase in the number of mutations in my area in southeast Michigan. Uh, there's um, some photos that have been uploaded to Fukushima Facts Mutation Watch or the Mutation Watch page on Facebook where you can see those. And I'll be going back later this week and shooting video. About 60% of the weeds, and weeds grow fast and uptake a lot of water, so they show uh, changes the quickest, are, are showing defects and a number of defects, which is broom thickening of stems, um, and just the compound effect that's occurring on plants that are supposed to be single stemmed are growing out in every direction, and some of them are growing like other plants out of them. Right, what happens also is these plants will grow faster. Most people don't realize after Nagasaki and Hiroshima, the radiation burden and the electromagnetic pulse causes a massive bloom of flowers and other plants with lots of mutations. And it actually stimulates growth. It's contrary to what you'd think. And this is what some people take wrongly when they talk about the idea of hormesis, where all radiation is good for you. If you have radioactive stones in a stream from a mountain and the water flows over them and there's no isotopes actually entering the water molecules, but only a signature of the radiation frequency, that's good for you. But if you have radioactive fleas of strontium, cesium, and other heavy isotopes showing entering your body like thorium, like Dr. Bernhoff said a month ago in the program here, you're crazy if you think that those are good for you. Especially things like tritium. Tritium is not good. And any lying piece of garbage that tries to tell you otherwise, Dr. Deagle's there with his intellectual power saw to hack them down. Yeah, and the, the um, frequent uh, saying that, that uh, the prone people use is, well, you get radiation from the sun and from the ground, and that's true, but what blew out of the reactors is a million times worse. Oh, yeah. and these are, these are internally accumulating in your body. Uh, and when you fly, by the way, on altitude, and you can go on the NOAA site because they have data out from 2007, so it's long before Fukushima, you can see that as you go at higher altitude, you're going to get some more cosmic background radiation, solar radiation, etc. Those are primarily beta particles and gamma rays because the alpha particles can penetrate the skin of the aircraft. They are taken in into the aircraft as a radiation release and so radioisotopes. And what happens is back about 30 years ago, they took off even the HEPA filters inside aircraft. So the air inside an, air, an aircraft is usually compressed to 8,000 feet altitude. So if you're at 30,000 feet, they have to compress that air. So they're magnifying the radioactive components in that plume by many, many times, you know, if you calculate using Henry's law. So that air is compressed down. Maybe you're going to get, say, 20 or 30 times the radiation of the plume per volume because you have to create an 8,000 uh, foot altitude environment in the capsule of the, of the jet aircraft cabin. Uh, I tried to get data, I tried to get Dr. Wyden, uh, Senator Wyden's uh, response. I'm preparing uh, documents for Senator Feinstein so that they can push to try to have radiation detection done in their commercial aircraft. But we are totally stymied. You see, Berkeley will not respond to me. These government agencies won't respond. I talked to uh, Senator uh, Feinstein, so-called EPA nuclear expert, and I asked him, I said, look, the EPA are doing nothing. Their rad net is useless. They don't even support the proper rad net uh, sites that they do have. And the ones that show high levels, they take them offline. It's amazing. And he had no response. None. None. These people are like, they're, I don't know what they're doing. Other than maybe going to fancy coffee shops. But they're certainly not doing their job. No, they're collecting a paycheck, and that's about it. Yeah. It's very disturbing. Tell us about the remaining couple of minutes, because we're going to go into this more on Friday. What do you know on the 20 points you have about the approach of the, they call Planet X? Because a lot of people think, oh, why does Diego get into this? Because it's real. Uh, Moses, we refer to in the Old Testament, who wrote the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, the, uh, the, the Torah. 
was trained by the high priest because he was a genius. He was the, the adopted son to become the pharaoh. His name Moses meant he was already designated to be the next pharaoh. He, uh, after one of his countrymen was killed by the Egyptian uh, guards killing his countrymen, he decided to slay the guard and then he took off to the, the what's called the deserts of Midian. That was actually in Saudi Arabia where he was near Medina, Mecca and Medina. And he was trained in all the astronomy, so he knew about the approach of the what's called the Satan star. All of the ancient mon uh, monotheistic religions of the ancient worlds originated uh, as a battle between the sun, meaning Saul, there because they're all sun worshippers, and this Satan star, the destroyer that would come periodically every 3,600 years into our solar system. Every single one of the ancient sun worshipping religions, from Mesoamerica to the Far East to China uh, to uh, uh, Medo Persia, now, all of these ones that worship the flying disc with the solars and flares on either side, all of them originated from the interaction between this returning class three red dwarf star and our son Saul. So tell us about what, what, what signs you have. Well, we, things that we do know, 90% of our solar systems are binary, which means we would be the exception if we didn't have a second sun. Right. We have geological evidence and tree rings and ice cores that show that there was a major upheaval in climate change, um, most of that from a substantial increase in the acidity of volcanic ash or increase in volcanic activity, and that's occurred about every 3,600 years. Right. We've had movement of the North Pole and an increasing rate over the last few years. Lots of unusual sun activity and flares. The sun is doing things that people have never seen before. We had an early sunrise in Greenland. It rose two days early. Um, the, the global economic collapse and the fact that no one's doing anything about it. Well, the reason why it's rose two days early, and they don't want to tell you that the tilt of the, of the Earth on its axis has already changed. Now, there's not been a lithospheric mantle disjunction yet. But what I was told back in the U.S. Space Command back in July 10th, 1994, is that the favorite place for them to build their underground cities worldwide is in these ancient magma domes uh, where the lithosphere, the crust of the Earth, moves. And the crust can be anywhere from 10 to 50 miles or more thick. Slides over the mantle of the Earth, and the magma domes are left vacant, basically. And this happens, yeah, this has happened over millions and millions of years. And, uh, is this going to happen again, just like that miniseries Battlestar Galactica? This has happened before, and this is going to